you might be distressed with your family members over something else that's not that much of a priority, but all of a sudden you're turning it into one because you feel like, I have to have order here. So I hear a lot about that, and I see a lot about that. People think it might be about their mon- money situations. Do I have enough money? Oh, my God, I shouldn't be spending this money, or I spent so much money, why did I do that? That's a bad feeling. And I I started to become in tune with how much anxiety there is in people when um, people started to call me with tales of animals behaving very differently than they'd been behaving in the past. I was speaking with a woman Oh, last week. She had this lovely cat. They've had it for years. She has two kids. And the cat started to hiss at the kids. And that was really, well, it was scary because she was afraid the kids were going to get scratched or and also become afraid of their pet, which really bummed her out. And she knew something had to be awry. She tried going to the vets. He said the cat was healthy. She tried a lot of different, you know, different food. She tried all kinds of things that she knew what to do. And finally, she was like, um, that's why I'm calling you. I don't know what to do. So I have immediately got in tune with when I spoke to the kitty, I felt this anger coming out of this cat that was so strong. And so I said, well, can you show me where it's coming from? Like, what's the anger about? And she showed me a picture of a woman who looked like her hair was standing on end. Like, she looked distressed. It was just this little, I get these little tiny vignettes or pictures. Sometimes I get an idea. Sometimes I hear the thought. Sometimes there's sound with the movie. Sometimes there's no sound. The cat didn't show me anything other than a woman looking really upset and mad. So um, the nice lady on the phone with me, I said, I think your cat just sent me a picture of you being really angry. And she laughed somewhat bitterly and said, well, I am a little mad. And I said, well, the cat is now confirming for me that that is exactly what the problem is, is that you're so angry that you're giving, I don't know, you're making the cat's back get up. You know how cat's backs get up when they're angry or distressed. And I said, is your back up? And she was experiencing, sadly, some really bad marital troubles. She had moved um, to a new state with her children uh, to start a new job. So it was sort of a forced career move. And her husband uh, decided he didn't really want to come and he might come later. He wasn't sure if he was going to come. So there was sort of the separation where he felt he, was, he wasn't backing her anymore. And she was worried that they were headed towards, you know, some sort of termination in their marriage. So she was really mad at him. Couldn't help herself. And she was also mad at her corporation. She didn't want to move either. So, and she was even mad at her kids for being kids, which is awful. But, you know, they just wanted her attention. And she, she said, I am hissing at my kids. She goes, I can't believe you just said that to me. And I said, you kind of are. Which made her, I don't know, she ended up crying. It was a very emotional appointment because she felt terrible. She's a good mom. But she was put, she's been put in a terrible position, and she realized she's really unhappy about it. And after a conversation, she realized that she needed to go get some professional counseling so that she could uh, figure out what to do next, you know, quit her job, get back with her husband. But certainly she was going to be a better mom. <laughs> and, you know, she realized, I am so angry. i got to get off this. And she needed some professional help. So... The cat hissing was really her hissing. And she was anxious but didn't even really know what to to do about it. Like there was no clear direction for her. But by being aware that she was escalating from anxiety into anger, she saw that in herself and she said, I'm going to fix this because that isn't the right way to to be a mom or, or or a pet mom. And the whole thing about anxiety can be, interesting um, because you're always saying, well, what's wrong? You're looking for trouble. So I spoke to this woman who had a lovely show hunter, a fancy show horse, and she'd retired him. He didn't really like showing anymore. And so they just trail rode and she enjoyed him. It was like the highlight of her life to spend time with this horse. She couldn't wait to go come home from her busy job every day and be with this horse and go for just a peaceful little ride. And he was kind of older, retired. And suddenly he started to spook. 
Um, when the wind would blow, if a branch would jingle, he'd spin in a circle and run back towards the barn. She'd fallen off a couple times. He took off and ran back to the barn without her because he got so scared with his reins dangling. He got hung up in a fence. Um, they had some just terrible, nervous things happen to them. And she said, this is like my greatest joy. We've been together, this horse and I, like a decade. And I can't get over that now all of a sudden he's dumping me and leaving me in the dirt. Like, what is what in the world? It felt terrible to her. So I spoke to the horse. And the horse, is, the horse his name was Harry. He, was, he said, well, she keeps telling me something's wrong. Her whole, everything about her is saying something's wrong. Her nerves are jangly. Her heart rate is high. She's grabbing the reins unnecessarily. So I think something's scaring us. There must be something wrong if she thinks something's wrong. So I'm trying to protect us both because I'm a flight or fight animal. I'm a, I'm a herd animal. When I think danger is present, I fly. I get away from it. That's what herd animals do. So I'm flying away from trouble. So I said, did you know you were flying away from trouble and you were leaving her behind like she's falling off of you and she could really get hurt? And he said, well, of course I'm not trying to do that, I, but I'm losing my head sort of. I, I get so alarmed because she's so alarmed. So I told her that and she said she was that way, that she'd had a series of life events that had her just really rattled. And she couldn't quiet her own anxiety. She was riding the horse to quiet it, but instead she was making the horse anxious. So she recognized after a moment, like, hmm, I got to do something differently about the things I feel anxious about. And so I asked the horse, he had a mineral deficiency and a magnesium deficiency, which sometimes can make you nervous. And so we, we sorted that out. His saddle wasn't totally comfortable. So it made his back ache when she rode him. It didn't fit him properly. So she was going to make amendments to the diet and to the saddle, which were physical things that were putting him on edge, that were adding to the whole thing. And then she, was, she took it very seriously that she was really the cause of the anxiety and couldn't have agreed more, which is kind of a common thing for horse people to understand them, about themselves. Nervous people shouldn't be on nervous horses because they'll amplify things. But in this case, this wasn't a nervous horse. This was a horse that was honoring her fear and trying to get her into safety and instead was you know, losing her, <laughs> dumping her into the ground by mistake. So after we talked about that, they really did a lot better, which was, which was wonderful to hear and see. Um, he, I said, your job is to protect her and almost let her relax and just lull her into a quiet pattern of moving with your body so that she can relax and know that any noise you hear, anything that startles you, there's nothing going to hurt you just as, ne as it never has. So he did that for her. He changed his reaction. He recognized he was kind of getting carried away. And the, the, the mineral change in his diet, I think, helped his uh, body, his nervous system heal. So he was able to kind of go back to being the tried and true horse that he was. So I'll be back. This is Laura Rowley with Animal Connections with Laura Rowley on syndicated Dream Vision 7 radio network. We'll be back for some more tales and some more talks about how your animal can show you your best happiness. What if your dog, cat, or horse could help you with your love life? What would they suggest? It's fun to think about and a wonderful way to conduct yourself. After all, animals know well how to love and invite us to love them unconditionally. That's a pretty great way to live life. Animals always communicate with our highest good as their central focus, even when sometimes we feel stymied or frustrated with their behavior. Visit laurarowleyhealer.com to book a workshop or private long distance phone reading. Laura's readings and workshops help you find the part of you that's able to tune in and connect to your amazing animals. Laura Rowley believes we can all understand by listening differently. 
Book a workshop or private long-distance phone reading now by going to laurarowleyhealer.com. That's L-A-U-R-A-R-O-W-L-E-Y healer.com. Are you searching for a way to help create global change? Dream Vision 7 Radio Network's vision is to have an eclectic group of radio hosts dedicated to educating, enlightening, and helping humankind with positive messages and tools that enhance lives using different modalities and programs. If you would like to join our team and help illuminate the universe, call Deborah at 508-226-1723 or Deborah at DreamVision7Radio.com. Edesia is a U.S. nonprofit dedicated to the dream of ending childhood malnutrition for millions of children around the world. Through the manufacture of Plumpy Nut and other nutrient-rich, peanut-based, ready-to-use foods, Edesia has already delivered life and hope to nearly 1 million children in over 26 developing countries. To find out how you can join Edesia's dream of ending childhood malnutrition, please visit ediciaglobal.org. Looking for a fun and relaxing getaway? Omega Rest and Rejuvenation Retreats are a great way to unwind and renew your spirit. Stroll through the garden, relax by the lake, or try a daily yoga or movement class. You can stretch your body, quiet your mind, and do as much or as little as you choose. Located in Rhinebeck, New York, just 90 miles north of New York City, Omega's natural environment and quiet pace allow for extraordinary experiences to unfold. Learn more at eomega.org. Animal Connections with Laura Rowley is an intuitive show created for you to learn what it's like to talk to animals. Laura shares 20 years of experiences of being a pet psychic and healer every Friday at 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. Eastern Time on Dream Vision 7 Radio Network, media partner for the Omega Institute. Our beloved animals share our lives and have amazing insights into our well-being, providing us with opportunities for personal growth once we truly begin to listen. It's fun to use animal wisdom to enhance our emotional and spiritual world. Who better than our furry friends to teach us the wisdom born of unconditional love? This is Dream Vision 7 Radio Network, uniting mankind with universal love. Our shows are created from the heart, bringing each listener to a place of divine enlightenment. Breathe, relax, and enjoy. Let life flow. Hello, you're back with Laura Rowley, and you're listening to Animal Connections with Laura Rowley on syndicated Dream Vision 7 radio network. I'm on every Friday at 9 a.m. or 9 p.m. Eastern Time. You can listen online or on your mobile devices. To learn more or for a full schedule, go to DreamVision7Radio.com. DreamVision7 Radio Network is the media partner for the Omega Institute. So today we're having a discussion about happiness and how your animal can show you your best happiness. And sometimes the way they show you that is by wagging their tail, being playful, and then you know, hmm, life is pretty good for them, so I must be doing a good job of being in balance with my own life. Other times they show distressful behaviors, which shows you that maybe you have a little work to do or that you could be doing a better job at getting your life in balance. Because sometimes when we're balanced, we just feel happy because we feel peaceful. So we don't have to get too worried when we're unhappy. All we have to say to ourselves is say, hmm, it's just about balance. What's out of balance? So animals can point to that. One. Um, uh, I, I was. Uh, this was an interesting story. It was um, a greyhound that was an extremely successful uh, dog show dog. He was very well bred. He went to big shows like national shows, and uh, was one of the top dogs in the country. And uh, they have to be able to be extremely relaxed with, in a public venue and be very obedient, which he'd always done. That's how he got all his titles. Um, judges had to be able to touch them in certain parts of their body to make sure their stance was right, look in their mouths, all that sort of thing. He did all that. That was never a big deal. Until suddenly one day it was a big deal. He, uh, when the judge touched him, like I think maybe on his tail or his hindquarters somewhere, which is I think a common practice, 
um, he spun around and, and snapped at the judge, which is a big no-no. I mean, that's the end of it if you do that. Um, so the woman thought maybe the dog was sore, took him, had x-rays, you know, looked at his 